This is Movie Tone. Lionel Gamlin reporting. As you'd imagine, crossing the line aboard Vanguard was a ceremony carried out in great style. Neptune, Amphitrite and their attendants had a big job on hand. It isn't often that the royal family crosses the equator. The business of shaving and ducking members of the ship's company lasted some three hours. Among those dealt with was Frank Gillard, who got specially severe treatment, not because he represents the BBC, but because he'd previously flown over the line without a certificate. Princesses received special treatment of a very different kind. Instead of being ducked, a gentle powdering. Amphitrite is said to have interceded with Neptune on their behalf. Anyway, it was all very satisfactory. The princesses being given the freedom of the seas and their majesties accepting equatorial season tickets. Later, the cruiser Nigeria came close alongside and took up her escort duties. And fine weather continuing to grace the voyage, everyone made the most of it. The princesses, for example, are here seen enjoying deck games in company with a number of midshipmen. And when I say enjoying, I mean just that. Well, you can see for yourselves. much doubt about the enjoyment, I think. But of course, this part of our newsreel story of the voyage of the vanguard underlines the informality of the royal family at sea. Strenuous days lay ahead, and already as the great battleship neared Cape Town, final touches were being put to the ship, and the tour of the Union was about to begin. The city and Table Mountain, towering over 3,000 feet in the background, were basking in brilliant sunshine when the ship came in. A magnificent sight she must have been to all the thousands watching ashore. And it must have been an exciting moment for the royal family too, as they prepared to receive the welcome of the mother city of the Union. Cape Town has a population of nearly half a million, and some idea of their loyal greeting could already be grasped as the cheering began. When His Majesty went ashore, he was the first British reigning sovereign to set foot on South African soil. He was received by Major Van Ziel, the Governor General and his wife, and of course, Field Marshal Smuts, the Prime Minister, was next to express his great pleasure at the Royal visit. A number of presentations followed before the drive to Government House began. Pretty well everyone in Cape Town must have been there to welcome the royal visitors. Lining the streets, watching from windows and balconies, waving and cheering. As for the decorations, they were reminiscent of London during the coronation. A wonderful welcome from the people of the Cape had been certain, but the experience even exceeded expectation. During their stay in the Union, the royal family will be visiting each of the four provincial capitals, spending some days in the Governor-General's four residences. Government House Cape Town is a long, rambling building of 60 rooms. 
It was built in the 17th century and has magnificent lawns and gardens, surely a royal residence. On the day following the arrival, there was a civic reception on the Grand Parade in front of the City Hall. Again, the streets were filled, and thousands were there to see their majesties and the princesses arrive at the Royal Pavilion. They were received by the administrator of the Cape Province, Mr. Carinas, and the mayor of Cape Town, Mr. Bloomberg. Addresses of welcome were given by both. Here is an extract from Mr. Bloomberg's. By your kingly qualities and by your gracious example, to hand on to future generations, unimpaired in power and with undimmed lustre, the rich inheritance which we ourselves have received at your hands. It is our fervent wish that you may long continue to reign over the destinies of our beloved land. In the course of his reply, the king said, I thank you sincerely for your words of welcome to the queen, our daughters and myself, on behalf of the people of the Cape, the province, and this great city of Cape Town. Nothing could have been more auspicious for the complete success of the tour than the ceremonies that marked its opening. Cape Town continued to take every opportunity of expressing the very warmest of welcomes. After the reception, their majesties paused to talk with service patients and the nursing staff from the Weinberg Military Hospital. In the afternoon, the Governor General and Mrs. Van Ziel gave a garden party at their country house, Rook, about four miles from the city. Some 5,000 guests were present, and in the beautiful setting of the garden, the scene can only be described as brilliant. In style, the occasion was like a garden party at Buckingham Palace. In significance, how different. For here, the King and Queen and their daughters were for the first time the guests of the youngest of the King's dominions. <laughs> 